Brenda, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Let me tell you a story about how Planned Parenthood tried to plan my parenthood. In November of 2006, I found out I was pregnant. At the time, I was in a relationship with an abusive alcoholic. I felt scared, and due to abuse in my own childhood, I was certain I did not want to bring a child into this world under those conditions. I had gone to Planned Parenthood for other reasons in the past, so of course it was the first place I turned. I went in for an ultrasound and was asked questions of my situation, which I shared with the technician. At the bottom of my ultrasound, she wrote, the patient will contact us if and when she plans to terminate. I was faced with an uncertain future, and so on January 12, 2007, I reluctantly returned to Planned Parenthood to terminate my pregnancy. I must have walked out 20 times that day, but kept going back in. I even checked the box in my paperwork that read, I am not sure I want to go through with my abortion. Because of this, I was taken into a private room to meet with a counselor. After telling him of my situation, he told me that my child would likely be an alcoholic, I would have to deal with abuse from him or her when they got older, potentially watch them die because of alcoholism, and my life would be a living hell. Not to mention the abuse my boyfriend would put us both through. This spoke to my fears, and so I took the medication that he handed me. Soon I was on the cold operating table. They assured me I was doing the right thing. I laid there and wept, repeating, my baby, my baby, as my child was ripped violently from my body. I will never forget the horrific noise of the machine that took my child's life and broke my heart. I felt violated and alone. The nurse gave me antibiotics and paperwork and sent me on my way. Immediately, I felt a great sense of loss. I laid on my mom's recliner with a vacant stare. I was in great emotional and physical pain. I had thoughts of suicide, and because I would never be able to do such a thing, I wished death would come find me. I had horrible pains in my abdomen and in my legs. One night, the pain became unbearable. I went to the bathroom, and a huge mass of blood and tissue fell into the toilet. I turned and stuck my hands in the toilet to pick up the remains of the baby, of my baby, as I lay on the bathroom floor weeping. This was all I had left of my child. A couple of weeks later, after my abortion, I developed an intestinal infection from the procedure and excessive antibiotics. I lost 20 pounds in three months from depression and infection. I was miserable in every sense of the word. I didn't care if I lived or died. The months that followed were filled with excessive drinking and other self-destructive behavior. I wanted to hurt. I wanted to suffer. I felt I deserved it for what I had done. Two years later, though, I had a dream. I was in hell, but I could see blue skies and a steeple in the distance. This is when I decided to start attending church, and in March 2009, I was baptized. I was beginning to learn of God's love and forgiveness. In August of 2010, I attended a two-and-a-half-day Rachel's Vineyard retreat, and for the first time in three years, I fully accepted God's love and forgiveness. This was also the first time I had entertained the idea of self-forgiveness. The retreat helped me to realize that I have only just begun to scratch the surface of my healing, but now I have a support system and a loving, forgiving God to help me through. I know I will battle with this one choice that I made for the rest of my life. I recently saw a pro-life sign that said, Abortion. One heart stops, another heart breaks. The fact is, the effects are far greater. My abortion deprived my, mom, uh, my child of life, me of motherhood, my mom of a grandchild, my siblings of a niece or a nephew, and the world of a beautiful human being. I would never wish the heartache and misery I've experienced as a result of my abortion on anyone. I stand here today to say, don't buy the lie. There are always options, but abortion should never be one of them. And this is why I am silent no more.